Sunday is definitely the best day of the week. Would you have to agree? Yes. I love being here on a Sunday morning. Um, oh, I love Mars Hill Church, but you know what? The Braves are playing at 1130 today, so I'm going to make sure we get us out of here in a one fell sweep, okay? Good. So for those of you that don't know, um, when I was in college, my undergrad that I studied was actually agriculture, um, if that shocks you. I mean, it would shock me too if I looked like, if I looked this handsome all the time. <laughs> so, um, nonetheless, when I was studying agriculture, I got the pleasure of studying botany. So all that means is that uh, it's the study of plants. And when I was in botany class, I got to grow plenty of beautiful flowers that you see. Um, but the most notable thing that I actually uh, took from my botany class is I learned that uh, different plants actually adapt their root structure to their environment. And I thought that was pretty cool. So all that means is that depending on the ecosystem that a plant is in, it roots differently. So for instance, in the tundra, there's this plant called an arctic willow. And I saved you, uh, spared you the scientific name because nobody really cares about that. But the arctic willow actually takes its roots and it has shallow roots, so it'll spread out around its environment rather than growing down. Versus the trees, the sequoias that you find in the redwood forest out in California have big roots that grow deep into the ground. So both of these plants, they live and they survive but they don't produce the same fruit. And this, mor this morning, I'm going to look at a passage of Scripture in Mark chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 3. You can flip there if you've had a bookmark. It says this, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So you might know this as the parable of the sower, and you've probably heard it taught over the years. But I think that in the pulpit, one mistake that gets made is that often it's, it's taught as if there are four types of seed, or in other words, that there's four types of people. However, if you look and you really uh, take the scripture for what it is, it's four types of soils that Jesus is talking about. And that's the theme of this parable. It's the type of soil that the seed falls on. And Jesus mentions four different types. He mentions the wayside, the rocky soil, the thorny soil, and the fertile soil. So I actually studied this, uh, this scripture in my last seminary class. I read a little dissertation on it. Um, but through that, I, I actually discovered something new. So let me give us a, a breakdown of each of those different soil types. So first, we have the wayside, or in other words, it's the seed that's exposed. So there's no protection, and Jesus says that the birds come and, and gather it. And then later, when he's talking to his, to his disciples, and his disciples ask, well, what did you mean by that? He says, this is like, those who receive the word, but the enemy comes and snatches it from them. And then we have rocky soil. And the rocky soil has soil on it, but it's not very deep. It's kind of like the tundra. So seed here, it can take root, but their roots, instead of growing down, they actually grow out. Now the thing about that is that when that happens, that plant isn't very deep-rooted so it can be blown away by a wind or a storm or in this case what Jesus talks about is that the sun comes out 
and it withers the plant. And then next we have the thorny soil. And this one's the one that speaks to me the most. Because at first, any time that I would read this particular parable, I used to think that it was the world coming and choking us out. But upon reading and studying this parable, the thing that was revealed to me is that rather, it's a competition. So here we have these thorns that Jesus talks about. And it's, it, it becomes this competition of our hearts between the world and Jesus. It's not the thorns themselves that will choke out the word, but rather it is the competition for the heart of man between the word and the world. And finally, we have the fertile soil, the soil where a seed would grow and produce fruit year after year. And when I think about fertile soil, I'm reminded of a peach tree because a peach tree takes years and years and years to actually be able to reach the point where it can fruit. And it's roughly about seven years. But after that seven years, it produces fruit for nearly 15 to 20 years. So in all that waiting, you get almost double the fruit. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what that is. But I think when we read this parable... We often feel this overwhelming sense and this calling to stay in the Word of God. When we first initially read this passage of Scripture, we feel like Jesus is telling us, oh, you've got to stay in the Word. You've got to stay tethered to the Bible, to the Word of God. And I could see how we would arrive at that conclusion because, after all, this passage is about the Word. However, when I look at this passage, something that's revealed to me is that the word, it remains constant. It doesn't change. It doesn't waver. The word is the same in every one of Jesus' metaphors in this parable. The parable of the sower isn't about the condition of the word of God. Instead, it's about the condition of our hearts in which we receive the word. So if the seed in the parable represents God's word, then the soil in the parable would represent our hearts. So how fertile is our heart? Is our heart fertile? Does it produce? Or is that even the question that we have to ask this morning? Because maybe your heart is fertile, but there's too many thorns within your soil, within your heart. Thorns of work and finances and anxiety and stress from family members or surge protectors going out. I think the thing that is missed in this parable is that every one of these types of soils that Jesus speaks of, the wayside, the rocky soil, the soil, and even the good soil, the thing that is often missed is that each soil has the ability to produce fruit, just in a different capacity. And each soil has the capability of holding the word of God. But it's only the good soil that has the ability to take on the deep-rooted nature that comes with holding God's word for its longevity. I know for me personally, I often find myself in the place of and and my heart in the place of feeling a lot like thorny soil. 
I usually have a, typically have a pretty busy week, and I work seven days a week, it feels like, between my two jobs, but I often feel like I don't make enough time for God's word. And so often I, I ask myself, like, all right, well, how, how can I create the environment in order to receive God's word? But the question that instead I should be asking myself is, is my heart fertile enough to receive God's word? And within that, it's the difference between a condition and a symptom. Because the, the, the condition is I'm not reading God's word, but the symptom is my heart is not fertile for it. And I find myself often in the place of thorny, soil. Where in other words, that there's so many thorns around in day-to-day -day, day -day life that the word doesn't have enough nutrients to grow. And when that's the case, we have to cut back at those thorns in order to make way for the word of God. I once had the pleasure of taking care of a vineyard. And I don't know if you've ever had your own vineyard or you've taken care of a vineyard or you have aspirations to take care of a vineyard. But the incredible thing that I had never known prior to that was that uh, grapevines are actually what's called a hardy plant, or in other words, it grows bark. So the trees that you see outside, that would be considered a hardy plant, but something like, uh, an, I don't know, a dandelion, that's a soft plant. But because of that, a grapevine actually gets weighted and it gets heavy. So if you're taking care of a vineyard, what you have to do is you have to go through and you actually have to clip off all of the smaller branches in order to make way for those ones that are already big and producing fruit. Or else, that vine just gets too heavy and it's weighted down. And I feel as if that's the same thing that we have to do on a daily basis with our hearts. Our goal is a fertile heart, ready to receive God's word. Well, how do we get there? Through daily pruning, through asking ourselves the question every single day, is my heart ready to receive the word of God? Or is it just on Sundays? Is it just on Sundays where I'm ready to receive the word of God? Because during the rest of the week, I've got baseball that I gotta take the kids to. Or I've got conference calls to answer from nine to five. See, the issue is not whether or not we have the ability to make time for God's word, but rather, are we choosing in our hearts the desire to make room for God's word? And I often find that this is kind of something, a practice that we can do with anything in our lives. Is there anybody who still is holding their New Year's resolutions? No, that's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> so they say that the reason why we don't hold those things is because we're so gung-ho about it at the beginning, but we never actually take those habits that we form within the week and continue them for the month and then two months and then three months. And the reason why is because our why is not big enough. Our why is not big enough. So if your goal was to, I don't know, lose 30 pounds, 
so you decide to go to the gym. And now you're spending $45 on a gym membership and you don't even go. Well, why? What was your why behind it? If your why was, I got to get my six pack abs, that's probably not big enough. But you see, if you take the motivation and your why becomes, I want to be healthy so that way I can spend more years with my grandkids or with my kids or to be able to see my great-grandkids, then your why changes. becomes more of a sense of longevity. And I believe that's the same thing that we have to do with the conditions of our heart when it comes to God's word. So what's your why? Why do you read scripture? Why do you encapsulate yourself in God's word? I remember in college I had this season where I loved reading God's word. Like I would wake up every morning and I'm like, Sweet, I get to read the Bible. And I remember that during that season, my why was I wanted to know Jesus as best as I possibly could. And I think that's a great why, because it gave me longevity to get up every morning and commune with God. But if your why is just simply, I got to read my Bible because that's the thing that I'm supposed to do. Then that's a very six-pack abs why. When we read the parable of the sower, are we convicted to stay in God's word or are we convicted to create a fertile heart to receive his word? Let's pray. So Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the lessons that you once taught your disciples are now the same lessons that you teach us. That there's longevity to your teaching, Lord. And Father, I pray that as we leave this room, this sanctuary this morning, that you would create in us a fertile heart, that you would give us that strong purpose we're staying tethered to you. I pray that our whys become bigger. Our convictions become deeper. And we as people will become people who could better serve your kingdom because of it. And we ask these things in your name, Jesus. Amen.
Thank you, Jennifer and Scott. Thank you, Cam, for giving us something to be thinking about this week. I'm looking for him. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. He's hiding behind a monitor. Um, no, that's a, a great point, something for us to be thinking about through the week. How are we preparing our hearts to receive God's word? And so as we pray this morning, we'll, we'll pray for that. We'll pray for each other and, and that, we'll, uh, that we'll be fertile, fertile soil for God's word. Uh, we we'll also want to pray for those in our congregation who are um, struggling. Uh, Sue Hudson had her surgery. She's recovering. I think she's, you know, got some, some recovery ahead of her. Um, so we'll continue to pray for Sue Hudson. Sheila Hancock uh, continues to need our prayer. I know there's others. I know there are some in our congregation who have lost loved ones and whose friends and family have lost loved ones in the past week. So we'll continue to pray for them and um, all the stuff that's going on in the world. And then we'll also pray for all of those things that we're thankful for, for all of those ways that we've seen God move in the past week in our lives. And so uh, let's go before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, it's such a great... Uh, picture, Lord, uh, of us as soil. Lord, that you want to um, grow in us and through us. You want to um, be planted in us. You want your word to um, grow and mature. God, your spirit is dwelling in us um, in good times and bad, in the day-to-day -day monotony of life and in those exciting moments and those scary moments. In all of those things, Lord, you are within us, growing and moving. 
God, help us to prepare our hearts for that. Help us to open our hearts for your movement. Father, for those that are going through difficult times right now, um, you are moving in that. You're, you are working in their soil. You are growing and you are moving. And so um, we just lift them up. God, sometimes it's easy to work on our soil. God, sometimes it's very difficult to work on our soil. And for those that are in that place, we, we just pray for your, your comfort and grace. God, that's the beauty of, of our faith and our, and our trust in Jesus is that um, you are a gentle gardener. You're a, an, an, you have an easy hand with us, Lord, that uh, I'm sure there's times you want to rip our roots out and, and throw us into the fire, but Lord, you don't. You, you nurture us, you tend to us, you cut away our thorns, you water us, and God, we're so thankful for that, that in, in um, good and bad, you are, um, you are good to us. And so that's what we lean on, God, that's what we turn to, is your goodness, your gentleness, your grace, your mercy. Um, God, we look to you, we thank you. God, help us be people that see you move, that look to you, that praise you, um, that acknowledge your, your ways and, and turn to them. So God, in the next few moments, uh, we pray for those who are hurting. Uh, we tend to our soil. We ask for forgiveness. Um, whatever it is we need to do, God, we take a moment and draw near to you. Heavenly Father, we're most thankful for the sacrifice of your Son that opened the way to your throne. God, we can come before you in confidence, not because of our goodness, but because of your grace, because of what Jesus has done for us. So we worship you and we praise you for that, and we pray that prayer that, that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now take a page out of Bryant's playbook. Like he says, don't forget our offering plates are in the back on your way out. But most importantly, what's Bryant say? What's our offering? We are. Our lives, our very lives. It's, sometimes it's easier to put a little bit of money in the plate, right? It's a lot harder to be an offering Monday through Saturday. So as we go, um, remember your offering is your life. It's, it's what you bring to the world around you. So let's let our light shine as we go forth in this week. Go, go forward, be a light, be a blessing, be an offering to the world, and have a great week. In Jesus' name.